The Second Book of Orlando Furioso. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Thomas Copeland. Orlando Furioso by Ludovico Ariosto, translated by Sir John Harrington. Book Two. The Argument. A friar between two rivals parts the fray by magic art. Rinaldo hasteth home, but in embassage he is sent away when tempest makes the sea to rage and foam. Bradaman seeks her spouse, but by the way, while she about the country wilded roam, met Pinabel, who by a crafty train both sought and thought the lady to have slain. O blind god love, why takest thou such delight with darts of diverse force our hearts to wound? By thy too much abusing of thy might, this discord great in human hearts is found. When I would wade the shallow ford aright, thou drawst me to the deep to have me drowned. From those love me, my love, thou dost recall, and place it where I find no love at all. Thou makest most fair unto Rinaldo seem Angelica that takes him for a foe, and when that she of him did well esteem, then he disliked and did refuse her, though which makes her now of him the less to deem. Thus, as they say, she renders quit pro quo. She hateth him, and doth detest him so, she first will die, ere she will with him go. Rinaldo, full of stately courage, cried, Down, thief, from off my horse, down, by and by, so robbed to be I never can abide, but they that do it dearly shall abide. Also, this lady thou must leave beside else one of us in her defence will die. A horse so good and such a goodly dame, to leave unto a thief it were a shame. What, me a thief? Thou in thy throat dost lie, quoth Sacrapin, that was as hot as he. Thief to thyself, thy malice I defy, for as I hear the name is due to thee. But if thou dare thy might and manhood try, Come, take this lady or this horse from me, Though I allow in this of thine opinion That of the world she is the matchless minion. Like as two mastiff dogs with hungry maws, Moved first to hate, from hate to raging ire, Approach with grinning teeth and grisly jaws, With staring eyes as red as flaming fire, at last they bite and scratch with teeth and claws, And tear themselves and tumble in the mire. So, after biting and reproachful words, Did these two worthy warriors draw their swords. One was on foot, the t'other on a horse. You think perhaps the horseman vantage had? No, sure, no whit. He would have wished to scorse, For why, at last, to light he must be glad. The beast did know, thus much by nature's force, To hurt his master were a service bad. The pagan could not, nor with spur nor hand, Make him unto his mind to go or stand. He stops when he should make a full career, He runs or trots when he would have him rest. At last, to throw his rider in the mire, He plungeth with his head beneath his breast. But Sacrapent, that now had small desire At such a time to tame so proud a beast, Did work so well at last by slight and force, On his left side he lighted from his horse. When from Bayardo's over furious might the pagan had himself discharged so, with naked swords there was a noble fight. Sometimes they lie aloft, sometimes alow, and from their blows the fire flies out in sight. I think that Vulcan's hammers beat more slow, where he within the mountain Etna's chaps doth ford for Joe the fearful thunderclaps. Sometimes they proffer, then they pause a while. Sometimes strike out like masters of the play, Now stand upright, now stoop another while. Now open lie, then cover all they may. Now ward, then with a slip the blow beguile. Now forward step, now back a little way, Now round about, and where the twan gives place, There still the other presseth in his place. Rinaldo did the pagan prince invade, And strike at once with all the might he could. The other doth oppose against the blade A shield of bone and steel, of temper good. But through the same a way Fusberta made Rinaldo's sword, And of the blow resounded all the wood. The steel, the bone like ice in pieces broke, And left his arm benumbed with the stroke. Which, when the fair and fearful damsel saw, And how great damage did ensue thereby, She looked pale for anguish and for awe, Like those by doom that are condemned to die. She thinks it best herself from hence withdraw, 
else will Rinaldo take her by and by, the same Rinaldo whom she hateth so, though love of her procured all his woe. Unto the wood she turns her horse in haste, and takes a little narrow path and blind. Her fearful looks oft time she back doth cast, still doubting lest Rinaldo came behind. And when that she a little way had passed, alo the vale a hermit she did find, a weak old man with beard along his breast, in show devout and holier than the rest he seemed like one with fasts and age consumed he rode upon a slothful going ass and by his look a man would have presumed that of his conscience scrupulous he was yet her young face his old sight so illumined when as he saw the damsel by to pass though weak and faint as such an age behooved that charity his courage somewhat moved the damsel of the hermit asked the way that might unto some haven town lead most near that she might part from france without delay where once rinaldo's name she might not hear the friar that could enchant doth all he may to comfort her and make her of good cheer and to her safety promising to look out of his bag forthwith he drew a book a book of skill and learning so profound that of a leaf he had not made an end but that there rose a sprite from underground whom like a page he doth of errand send this sprite by words of secret virtue bound goes where these knights their combat did intend and while they two were fighting very hard he enters them between without regard good sirs quoth he for curtsy's sake me show when one of you the t'other shall have slain and after all the travel you bestow what guerdon you expect for all your pain behold orlando striking ne'er a blow nor breaking staff while you strive here in vain to paris where the lady fair doth carry while you on fighting undiscreetly tarry I saw from hence a mile or thereabout Orlando with Angelica alone, and as for you, they jest and make a flout, that fight where praise and profit can be none. T'or best you quickly went to seek them out, before that any farther they be gone. Within the walls of Paris, if they get, your eye on her again you shall not set. When as the knights this message had received, they both remained amazed, dumb and sad, to hear Orlando had them so deceived of whom before great jealousy they had but good rinaldo so great grief conceived that for the time like one all raging mad he swear without regard of god or man that he will kill orlando if he can and seeing where his horse still stood untied he thither goes such haste he made away he offers not the pagan leave to ride nor at the parting once adieu doth say now Bayard felt his master's spurs inside and gallops main, and maketh any stay. No rivers, rocks, no hedge, nor ditches wide could stay his course or make him step aside. Nor marvel if Rinaldo made some haste to mount again upon his horse's back. You heard before how many days had passed that by his absence he had felt great lack. The horse, that had of human wit some taste, ran not away for any jadish knack. His going only was to this intent, to guide his master where the lady went. The horse had spied her when she took her flight, first from the tent as he thereby did stand, and followed her, and kept her long in sight. As then by hap out of his master's hand, his master did not long before alight to combat with a baron hand to hand, that is Ruggiero. The horse pursued the damsel all about, and holp his master still to find her out he followed her through valley hill and plain through woods and thickets for his master's sake whom he permitted not to touch the rein for fear lest he some other way should take by which rinaldo though with mickle pain twice found her out twice she did him forsake for first for awe then sacrapent withstood that by twice finding her he did no good Bayardo, trusting to the lying sprite whose false but likely tale so late he heard and doubting not it was both true and right he doth his duty now with due regard rinaldo pricked with love and raging spite doth prick apace and all to parisward to parisward he maketh so great shift the wind itself seems not to go so swift such haste he made orlando out to find that scant he ceased to travel all the night 
so deeply stuck the story in his mind that was of late devised by the sprite betimes and late as first he had designed he rode until he saw the town in sight where charles whose chance all christened hearts did rue with the small relics of his power withdrew and for he looks to be assaulted then or else besieged he useth all his care to store himself with victual and with men the walls eke of the town he doth repair and take advice both how and where and when for his defence each thing he may prepare an army new to make he doth intend and for new soldiers into england send he minds to take the field again ere long and try the hap of war another day and all in haste to make himself more strong he sends rinaldo england's aid to pray rinaldo thought the emperor did him wrong to send him in such haste and grant no stay not that ill will to the island he did carry but for another cause he fain would tarry yet now although full sore against his mind as loath to leave the lady he so loved whom he in paris hoped had to find because to obey his prince it him behooved he taketh this ambassage thus assigned and having straight all other lets removed he posted first to callas with great haste and thence embarked ere half next day was past against the mariners and masters minds such haste he made to return it back he takes the sea though swelling with great winds and threatening ruin manifest and rack fierce boreas that himself despised finds doth beat on seas with tempest foul and black by force whereof the waves were raised so high the very tops were sprinkled all thereby the mariners take in their greater sail and by the wind they lie but all in vain then back again they bend without avail now are they out they cannot in again no said the wind my force shall so prevail your bold attempts shall put you to some pain it was a folly any more to strive needs must they follow as the wind did drive in the foreship sometimes the blast doth blow straight in the poop the seas break to the skies needs must they bear a sail though very low to void the waves that higher still did rise but sith my web so diverse now doth grow to weave with many threads i must devise i, I leave rinaldo in this dangerous place and of his sister speak a little space i mean the noble damsel bradamant of ammon daughter and dame beatrice in whose rare mind no noble part did want so full of value and so void of vice king charles and france of her might rightly vaunt so chaste so fair so faithful and so wise and in the feats of arms of so great fame a man might guess by that of whence she came there was a knight enamoured on this dame that out of afric came with agrament rogero hight so was his father's name his mother was the child of agolant the damsel that of worthy lineage came and had a heart not made of adamant disdained not the love of such a knight although he had but seld been in her sight long travel and great pain she had endured and rid alone her lover to have found ne would she think her safety more assured if with an army she were guarded round you heard before how she by force procured king sacrapent to fall and kiss the ground the wood she passed and after that the mountain until at last she saw a goodly fountain a goodly fountain running in a field all full of trees whose leaves do never fade which did to passengers great pleasure yield the running stream so sweet a murmur made upon the south a hill the sun did shield the ground gave flowers the grove a grateful shade now here the dame casting her eye aside a man-at-arms fast by the brook bestride a man at arms she spied by the brook whose banks with flowers of divers hue were clad of which sweet place he so small pleasure took his face did show his heart was nothing glad his targe and helmet were not far to look upon a tree where tied his horse he had his eyes were swollen with tears his mind oppressed with bitter thoughts that had his heart distressed the damsel fair enticed by deep desire that all but chiefly women have to know all strangers states doth earnestly require the doleful knight his inward grief to show 
who marking well her manner and attire her courteous speech with him prevailed so he tells his state esteeming by the sight that needs she must have been some noble knight good sir said he you first must understand i served charles against the king of spain i horsemen had and footmen in my band in ambush placed the spanish king to slain i brought the fairest lady in this land and my best loved with me in my train when suddenly ere i thereof was ware there came a horseman that procured my care perhaps a man or some infernal sprite in human shape i cannot certain say but this i say he took the damsel bright even as a falcon seizeth on his prey so he my loving lady did affright and so affrighted bear her quite away and when i thought to rescue her by force aloft in air he mounted with his horse even as a ravenous kite that doth spy a little chicken wandering from the other doth catch him straight and carries him on high but now repents he was not with his mother what could i do my horse wants wings to fly scant could he get one leg before the other he travelled head before so many days among the painful hills and stony ways but like to one that were his wit beside i leave my men to do my first intent not caring of myself what should be tied so strongly to my fancy was i bent and took the blind god cupid for my guide by ways as blind to seek my love i went and though my sense my guide my way were blind yet on i go in hope my love to find a senite space abating but a day about the woods and mountains i did range in savage deserts wild and void of way where human steps were rare and very strange fast by the desert place a plain there lay that showed from the rest but little change save only that a castle full of wonder did stand in rocks that had been cloven asunder this castle shines like flaming fire afar not made of lime and stone as ours are here and still as i approached a little near more wonderful the building did appear it is a fort impregnable by war compacted all of metal shining clear the fiends of hell this fort of steel did make of metal tempered in the stygian lake the towers are all of steel and polished bright there is on them no spot or any rust it shines by day by dark it giveth light here dwells this robber wicked and unjust and what he gets against all laws and right the lawless wretch abuseth here by lust and here he keeps my fair and faithful lover without all hope that i may her recover ah woe was me in vain i sought to help I see the place that keeps that I love best, even as a fox that crying hears her whelp, now borne aloft into the eagle's nest. About the tree she goes and fain would help, but is constrained for want of wings to rest. The rock so steep, the castle is so high, none can get in except they learn to fly. And as I tarried in the plain, behold, I saw two knights come riding down the plain, led by desire, and hope to win this hold but their desire and hope was all in vain gradasso was the first of courage bold the king of saracan that held the rein rogero next a man of noble nation of years but young but of great estimation a little dwarf they had to be their guide who told me that they came to try their force against the champion that doth use to ride out of this castle on a winged horse which when i heard to them for help i cried and prayed them of my case to take remorse and that they would if twere their chance to win set free my love that there was locked in and all my grief to them i did unfold affirming with my tears my tale too true no sooner i my heavy hap had told but they were come within the castle's view i stood aloof the battle to behold and prayed to god good fortune might ensue beneath the castle lies a little plain exceeding not an arrow shot of twain and as they talked who first should fight or last they were arrived to the castle hill at length gradasso whether lots were cast or that rogera yielded to his will doth take his horn and blew therewith a blast the noise whereof the castle walls did fill and straight with greater speed than can be guessed came out the rider of the flying beast 
and as we see strange cranes are wont to do, first stalk a while, ere they their wings can find, then soar from ground not past a yard or two, till in their wings they gathered have the wind, at last they mount the very clouds unto, triangle-wise, according to their kind. So by degrees this mage begins to fly, the bird of Jove can hardly mount so high. And when he sees his time and thinks it best, he falleth down like lead in fearful guise, even as the falcon doth the fowl arrest, the duck and mallard from the brook that rise. So he, descending with his spear in rest, doth pierce the air in strange and monstrous wise. And Ergradasso, where thereof admonished, he felt a stripe that made him half astonished. The mage upon Gradasso brake his spear, who strikes in vain upon the air and wind. Away he flew without or hurt or fear, and leaves Gradasso many a pace behind. This fierce encounter was so hard to bear that good Alfana to the ground inclined. The same Alfana was Gradasso's mare, the fairest and best that ever saddled there. Aloft the stars the sorcerer doth ascend, and wheels about, and down he comes again, and on Ruggiero he as forced doth bend, that had compassion on Gradasso's pain. So sore the salt Ruggiero did offend, his horse the force thereof could not sustain, and when to strike again he made a count, he saw his foe up to the clouds to mount. Sometimes the mage Rogero doth assail, straightway Gradasso he doth set upon, and oft they strike again without avail, so quickly he at whom they strike is gone. He winds about as ships do under sail, his sails are wings, and rest he gives them none, but sets upon them in so sudden wise that he amazed and dazzled both their eyes. Between this one aloft and two alow, this conflict did no little space endure, until at last the night began to grow, with misty clouds making the world obscure. I saw this sight, the truth thereof I know, I present was thereat. Yet am I sure that very few, except the wiser sort, will credence give to such a strange report. This heavenly, hellish warrior bare a shield on his left arm that had a silken case, I cannot any cause or reason yield why he would keep it covered so long space. It had such force that whoso it beheld such shining light it striketh in their face that down they fell with eyes and senses closed and leave their corpse of him to be disposed. The target like the carbuncle doth shine, such light was never seen with mortal eye. It makes to ground the lookers-on decline, be they far off, or be they standing nigh, and as it closed their sight, it closed mine, that in a trance no little space was I. At last, when I awaked and rose again, the air was dark, and voided was the plain. The sorcerer hath ta'en the my surmise into his castle, as is likely most, and by this light that dazzled all our eyes my hope is gone, their liberty is lost. This is the truth, and do I aught devise? You hear the same, I felt it to my cost. Now judge if I have reason to complain, That have and do endure such endless pain. When as this knight his doleful tale had done, He sate him down all cheerless in the place. This was Earl Pinabel, Anselmus son, born in Maganza of that wicked race, who like the rest so lewd a course did run, he hoped the more his lineage to deface. For only virtue nobleness doth dignify, and vicious life a lineage base doth signify. The lady fair, attentive all this while, doth hearken unto this Maganza's tale. Rogero's name sometime doth make her smile. Sometime again, for fear, she looketh pale. But, hearing how the sorcerer base and vile Should in a castle so detain him thrall, She pitied him, and in her mind she fretted, And oft desired to hear the tale repeated. When at the last the whole she understood, She said, Sir Knight, mourn not, but take some pleasure. Perhaps our meeting may be to your good, And turn your enemy unto displeasure. Show me this fort, for why it frets my blood so foul a prison holds so fair a treasure, and if good fortune favor mine intent, you will right well suppose your travail spent. Ah, said the knight, should I return again to pass these mountains hard and overthwart, though for myself it is but little pain to toil my body having lost my heart, 
for you to go whereas you may be slain or taken prisoner were a foolish part which if it hap yet me you cannot blame because i give you warning of the same this said he riseth up his horse to take the noble lady on the way to guide who means to venture for rogero's sake or death or thraldom or whate'er betide but lo a messenger great haste doth make that comes behind and tarry ho he cried this was the post that told to sacrament how she that foiled him was dame bradamant this messenger brought tidings in great post both from narbona and from montpelier how they were up in arms along the coast of aquamort and all that dwelled near and how marsilia's men their hearts had lost because of her no tidings they could hear and for her absence made them ill apaid they sent to have her presence and her aid these towns and others many to the same between the streams of rodan and of vere the emperor had assigned this worthy dame committing them unto her trust and care her noble value gat her all this fame because in arms herself she bravely bare and so the cities under her subjection this message sent requiring her direction which when she heard it made her somewhat pause twixt yea and no she stood a pretty space of one side honour and her office draws on the other side love helps to plead the case at last she means to ensue the present cause and fetch rogero from the enchanted place and if her force cannot to this attain at least with him a prisoner to remain in courteous sort her answer she contrived with gracious words and sent away the post she longs with her new guide to have arrived to that same place where both their loves were lost but he perceiving now she was derived from claramont that he detested most doth hate her sore and feareth to the same lest she should know he of maganza came there was between these houses ancient hate this of maganza that of claramont and each of them had weakened other state by killing men in both of great account this pinabel a vile and wicked mate that all his kin in vices did surmount means with himself this damsel to betray or else to slip aside and go his way and this same fancy so his head did fill with hate with fear with anger and with doubt that he mistook the way against his will and knew not how again to find it out till in the wood he saw a little hill bare on the top where men might look about but bradamant such amorous passion feels she follows like a spaniel at his heels the crafty guide thus wandering in the wood intending now the lady to beguile said unto her forsooth he thought it good sith night drew on themselves to rest awhile here is quoth he and showed which way it stood a castle fair and hence not many a mile but tarry you a little here until i may descry the country from the hill this said he mounted to the higher ground and standing now the highest part upon he cast about his eyes and looked round to find some path whereby he might be gone when unawares a monstrous cave he found and strange cut out and hollowed in the stone deep thirty cubits down it doth descend having a fair large gate at lower end such as great stately houses want to have out of which gate proceeds a shining light that all within most lights makes the cave and all this while on this felonious night this noble lady due attendance gave and never suffered him go out of sight she followed pinabel hard at his back because she was afeard to leave the track when as this villain traitor did espy that his designments foolish were in vain either to leave her or to make her die he thought it best to try a further train persuading her for to descend and to try what ladies fair within the cave remain for why said he within this little space i saw a goodly damsel in the place both rich arrayed and very fair of hue like one of noble lineage and degree and this her fortune made me more to rue that here against her will she seemed to be and when i thought for to descend and view the cause of this her grief to know and see i was no sooner from my horse alighted but with infernal hags i was affrighted the noble bradamant that was more stout than wary who it was did her persuade 
hath such desire to help a damsel out that straight the cave she meaneth to invade she finds by hap a long bough thereabout whereof a pole of mighty length she made first with her sword she hews and pairs it fit that done she lets it down into the pit she giveth pinabel the bigger end and prays him stand above and hold it fast and by the same intending to descend upon her arms her whole weight she doth cast but he that to destroy her did intend doth ask if she would learn to leap a cast and laughing loosed his hands that were together and wished that all the race of them were with her yet great good hap that gentle damsel found as well deserved a mind so innocent for why the pole strake first upon the ground and though by force it shivered all and rent yet were her limbs and life kept safe and sound for all his vile and traitorous intent sore was the damsel mazed with the fall as in another book declare i shall end of book two